Welcome back. Hope you guys are all doing well. I thought today with the hot muggy weather, maybe we'd talk about some air conditioning. As you guys all know, I have a hiker trailer and there's several different ways you can try to stay cool in a small space like this. So first and foremost, we can just open the two side doors and we can keep cool that way. If you have screen doors, that's a great option. You can open up the windows and have your screens in place and get some fresh air that way. And the best way to do this is to draw a little draft into the trailer. That's with your Max fan, your Fantastic fan, whichever style fan you have in your hiker. But you can turn that thing on and that pulls a lot of air through the trailer. And this is the preferred method of a lot of hiker owners. They don't have air conditioning. They have nothing but just a really good vent fan on top. You can sometimes add a small USB fan inside to move a little air. But that's all they have as far as trying to stay cool. One option I haven't tried is opening up the covers to the AC prep vents in the front of the trailer and then turning on your max fan. And that should be able to pull a pretty decent draft into the trailer too, uh, along with windows. Probably want to put a little piece of bug netting or something over that if you opt to do that, but I haven't personally tried this method. So let's say you definitely want air conditioning and uh, just cooling with a fan isn't going to do it. Well, first off, you got to remember you have to be on shore power. So you got to be in a state forest campground, uh, state park campground, someplace that has power in order to be able to run the air conditioner. So Hiker offers what they call an AC prep package. So what do you get with that? Well, basically you get a giant couple of holes drilled in the front of your trailer with a series of vents on the inside that can be open or closed and then you have a cap or cover on the outside that can open up that's where the hoses attach from the climate rights system that they recommend so hiker make sure you have all the adapters to attach to the tubes so that you can make your connection to the actual trailer itself it's basically a very large square unit and it includes the vent hoses there's the output side which puts the cold air into the hiker and then there's the exhaust that goes back to the unit. This unit also can be reversed uh, for heat. It does come with a uh, remote control too. So a couple things to remember with this unit is it's heavy. It's very heavy. Um, we just store it in the back of the truck then when we need it we pull it out. Make sure you have everything out of your toolbox before you set it up. Um, because otherwise you're not getting your stuff out. So we usually pull all that stuff out first, then we set it on top of the toolbox as you see in this picture. And some people might not think it's the most aesthetically eye-pleasing sitting out there like that, but it's extremely functional and we absolutely love that we have it on those warm, sticky, humid nights. So let's just do a uh, walkthrough of the setup. So basically, you take the covers off of your hiker and I prefer to have the cold side where the cold air is coming out be the shortest run to the trailer because you're gonna have less condensation and so on and it will condensate on the hose and you'll have the hose is kind of dripping if it's that humid of a night well you just unscrew it and you give it a quarter turn twist and you lock it right on put your clamp on and make sure you tape up your end. This will get you and it is razor sharp as it did me twice. The other one we taped up and we didn't do this one. We are now. Okay, good. So once you've got the input side of the trailer, then you connect the lower one, which is basically the return air. That one kind of goes up and over the unit. There's just enough hose to make that work. Uh, at first, we didn't have the unit sitting a little bit slightly off to the right, as you can see in the picture, and it would not fit. We could not get the two to connect, so we just moved it over a little bit, and uh, it connects and sets up perfectly. So we got the unit connected and we started out with a temperature of about 66 
degrees as you can see there um, there's all the full specs right there on the side of the unit uh, it is IPX4 rated for water it's designed to sit out in the elements so here's a shot of the remote control you can change the modes air heat change your fan has a sleep timer and you can see your temperature all from the remote so as the air conditioner unit runs it does have a drain hole in the bottom so you got to remember there's going to be water dripping out of the unit as it's converting the warm air to cold air so we had put a towel on it in the last picture but uh, you just remember that water is going to need a place to go somewhere so um, you're going to want to put a towel down and know that the front part of your trailer the tongue area is going to have a little bit of a puddle not a big deal so on the first time setting it up we wanted to see how fast we could cool down the trailer trailer inside was in the 70s 80s because of how hot it was outside the front of the trailer was in the hundreds 90s and 80s in different spots of the trailer and the actual hose that fed the cold air into the trailer was in the 40s and 30s i could not believe how cold that air was and if you have that on that side remember whoever's sleeping on that side it's going to have that cold breeze coming in right on top of them. So if they're a warm sleeper, you might want them on that side of the trailer. Just something to note. So it's nice that the uh, unit has a remote, but the biggest downsider is it's line of sight. It's not Bluetooth or anything like that, so you cannot control it from inside the trailer. That was a huge bummer with the remote control. So getting back to our temperature readings, we looked inside the trailer after about 10-15 minutes of runtime, and the inside wall, which was in the 70s and 80s, was now in the 50s. Um, the blankets, now obviously this is surface temperature, this isn't the actual air temperature inside, so it's probably a little warmer than that, but everything inside surface temperature was in the 50s, and I had 40 degree readings. So it was downright chilly. <laughs> But that's what I'd rather have it chilly than uh, throw an extra blanket on than uh, have it way too warm. So what do you guys think? Is air conditioning needed for these smaller trailers? Do you use air conditioning in your small trailer? What's your thoughts on it? Please leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, put them down below also. Share, like, and subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.